It is Monday, May 2nd. I am your host, The Cowboy. This is Elliot Wave Cafe, and welcome to another edition of the Chart of the Day. Today, we're going to talk about NASDAQ 100. Once again, let's get started. All right, hello everybody. How is uh, <laughs> how is everyone doing? Uh, pretty good weekend up here in Chicago. Let's jump back and take a look at the charts. Interesting price action today. We've had a pretty doomy day uh, until about the end, towards near the close, where Nasdaq was able to stage a little bit of a rally and just kind of jump off. Uh, those lows and create a little bit of a short squeeze in there. We have the Federal Reserve coming up on Wednesday, so the markets are going to be a little jittery, a little bouncy in anticipation of that announcement. However, we have about a 50 basis points increase in the Fed fund rate that is uh, pretty much set in stone for this meeting. Hopefully, they don't come up with any other big surprises. The big surprise would actually be if they would only hike 25 basis points. I guess if you're a bull, that's kind of what you're looking for. Uh, if you're a bear, you would like maybe a 75. So uh, probably they're going to satisfy the markets with a 50 basis points increase on Wednesday. But the Nasdaq did recover. Uh, I'm going to start with a look at the um, uh, time frame in here on a two day and we're going to, uh, uh, you know, dissect a little bit discounts. Not a lot has changed since I've done you know, the one last week, I just want to quickly remind remind you kind of where we are. This is my primary interpretation that we were in a wave W decline through an ABC, followed by an X wave uh, and then another ABC. This creates what we call a double zigzag, a zigzag in a wave W, a failure in an X and then another wave Y. Inside the corrective channel will be bouncing here up and down and then uh, continue to kind of come lower towards the, the bottom section of the upwards uh, upwards trending channel. I would expect a rally back in a B wave towards 14,283 over the next few sessions, few days, maybe a couple of weeks, we'll see what the Fed does. Because once this large risk event is out of the way, the markets can relax a little bit and, and try to recover. The volatility can get lower and I'll talk about that a little bit in a second. So here is the next count that I'm looking at. This is a more bearish count. Uh, so we're doing a little bit of Elliott Wave analysis here as well. Uh, on the Nasdaq. So if you're bearish on this and if you think this market will continue to crash lower, this is one of the ways that that could happen where you've had a wave one decline, a wave one decline in five waves and an impulse in a wave one. You're doing a three wave up in A, three wave down in B to new lows, 161.8 multiple of a wave A down to B lows, then a rally up here in a wave C near the wave A highs. This is probably a running flat unless we're making a new high there. But that creates a wave too high, followed by the next decline in a wave one, a subsequent pullback that will give way to a rally here again towards that $14,000 mark in three waves in a wave two, then crash lower in three, four and five for a third, a fourth and a fifth to complete a larger wave A. So this could mean that the markets are still bearish and they're just kind of starting um, to be negative and they're going to continue to do so towards the rest of the year. Now, I know this is a pretty heavy scenario. Um, a lot of people might not like that. I'm not saying it's my preferred interpretation, but you never know what the markets are going to do. You don't know how the Fed, how aggressive they're going to raise. You don't know what's going to break. So we have to be aware of a more uh, bearish scenario in the markets. OK, now they don't happen all the way in a vacuum. You're probably going to get some pullbacks along the way. And that's why we're looking for under both scenario, either, let's say, you know, a wave B rally or a wave two rally in here, um, you know, over the next uh, you know, several weeks. We'll see how long that would take. But that's kind of one of the ways, uh, two of the ways to kind of be bearish on the market shorter term here and then a little bit longer term so the next one that i have it's a little bit more of a bullish scenario where if you notice in here right both of them are looking at the wave to pull back so if you look at the wave one intermediate uh, with the wave to pull back in progress this count in here could say right that this wave one completed just like the other one up there but you're getting a second wave that's near completion to a flat in an ABC, I'm sorry, to an ABC zigzag with the flat in a wave B position. So you have a wave A impulse 
A, B, C, up in B, and then down in C for a wave 2. Now, this is a little bit more problematic because it's very short in time. You've only retraced about 38%, which is not very appealing for a second wave pullback. Usually those waves pull back a little bit deeper towards 50%, maybe even 618. And this is not a log scale, this is an arithmetic scale. So, um, you know, I think this is kind of rather short, you know, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on in case we're going to overtake this B wave highs and continue to push higher. You know, nobody knows exactly what's going to happen, but what I'm going to, what I'm going to watch is I'm going to watch for signs as we're, if we're rallying out of this uh, lows, how we're going to rally, how this is going to happen, if you're going to go impulsive, if you're going to crack through the trend line, if you're going to start building momentum, then this wave count will start to get more preferred and we're going to look for a continuation higher and maybe a squeeze higher towards the end of the year. I have no idea what's going to trigger this rally and nobody else does either. That's the good news, right? Um, if it's going to be a Fed inducing rally, if it's going to be, you know, if the economy, if there is a, you know, you know, if there's going to be a big new invention coming, I have no idea, you know, what would trigger such a big rally because right now the markets are pretty gloomy, right? They're pretty doom and gloom in here and everybody thinks we're going to crash and we're going to go down in a, in a massive way. So, uh, we're just, uh, we're just going to take it one step at a time, watching our counts, making sure that we might be able to take advantage of some of these rallies, maybe trade some of those. We're doing that in the pro room as well. Just kind of, you know, through my notes every single day. We, I've gotten a little bit long on, on the S&P 500 this morning. I took a little bit of a hit on a sell-off, but, you know, the market kind of rewarded that um, extreme bearish sentiment to a little bit of a rally here. So we'll see what happens into the Fed day. But that's interesting. I've also uh, sold some puts into the ARK ETF. So I'm going long, actually, right, by selling some credit. Um, I have a 35 short put on the ARK um, going up to July. So I have plenty of room in there, but... Um, you know, I'm, I think those those stocks have been beaten down and we're going to get some kind of a rally in those markets. Actually, today, if you looked at the Nasdaq, it was the best performing even, uh, you know, on a market that's been pretty, uh, you know, pretty nasty, at least up to the end of the day. So the Nasdaq stocks and, and the technology sector stocks were were doing pretty, pretty well. I was looking at my portfolio and I'm like, man, you know, I'm not the negative for some reason today. The markets were negative, but my portfolio wasn't. And believe me, I have plenty, you know, plenty of tech and, and you know, plenty of exposure to this to this market and and it didn't feel as bearish as some other days and i'm like something is wrong because um you know usually when you get a negative market uh, uh you know i can see it on my pnl so today was different like it was climbing and then the markets were selling off so something was really fishy out there and we ended up with a rally so we'll see what happens next but um you know that's kind of where my positioning is now i wanted to show you just a quick discussion on the vix i keep kind of bringing this back and the reason i do that and this is not your s p 500 vix okay this is vxn if you look up there that's vxn that is the vix of the nasdaq this nasdaq 100 that's the vix it's a little bit different than what we have in the s p 500 and it's got, you know, somewhat different levels. But what I wanted to show you here, I wanted to show you some ranges in the VIX in here. And, and, and it looks like somewhere towards 40 to 42, it's where you have the upper boundaries of this channel, of this, uh, um, you know, uh, to, not a trending channel, but a, a more of a cyclical kind of move in the, in the VIX, right? Where you're kind of bouncing up and down between these levels. And where I have the circles is where you have increased periods of volatility in the market and this is kind of what happens when you have that right you have a very choppy corrective type price section and, and sell-offs and bounces and things of that nature so very volatile market very volatile market in here as well um, you know and then obviously with the sell-off VIX went up all the way to 40 and remains elevated still right we're still I mean I could extend the circle to the right and it's been one of the longest periods in a while where VIX was you know it's kind of sitting in, in this kind of high volatility range so we're continuing to to look weakness in here and we continue to kind of you know trend lower a little bit but notice this right I'm making new lows in the VIX and it's a little bit of a divergence here because uh, uh, new lows in NASDAQ, but in the VIX, you know, we're still um, sitting still and we haven't taken this highs at 40. And usually when you do that, you know, you're probably going to get some volatility sellers coming in and pushing this market higher. Right? Because these are extreme levels, historically looking at it. And unless you have a big capitulation event, like something that would happen, you know, um, maybe, I don't know, every 
every 10 years, maybe every 15 years. I don't know when VIX will be able to climb so high here towards 75, 80 uh, in the NASDAQ, right? Those things are not, so you got to have an extreme sell-off event for this to kind of push so high, you know, so fast. So usually volatility sellers will jump in here and will try to, to, to reduce that and um, the market will bounce. So I'm, I'm keeping a close eye on that. I'm looking at this divergence. That's why I want to increase my long positioning in here and try to, uh, um, you know, play, you know, for that corrective rally in the, both in the NASDAQ and, um, you know, let's say in, in some of those uh, beaten down ETFs and stocks and, and things of that nature. So uh, that's kind of my game plan. I know it's a little bit of a contrarian move in here. And I've just, uh, you know, I've also wrote an article for Substack. I'll, I'll put a link in, in uh, um, towards the end of the video there where, you know, I presented the gloomy picture in kind of the closes that we've had on the monthly basis. Right. But also I'm 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 aware of the super bearish sentiment, which could which could lead to some, you know, short covering rallies here that are pretty that could be pretty aggressive. And, and you know, sometimes you don't want to miss those. So um, here we are. So that's the VIX. I just kind of wanted to, to kind of draw your attention to that and to the VXN where we are and with the divergence. So now, you know, here is a chart of the new highs and new lows in the, in the NASDAQ 100 as well. And, um, you know, you can see, uh, these, uh, green candles in here are basically showing you, you know, how many issues from those 100 are making new 52 week highs and how many are making new 52 week lows. So you can see that for the past several sessions in here, you know, you really haven't had anybody making 52 52 week highs in here. If anything, they were continuing to kind of sell lower. But what's interesting is that I'm getting a divergence in there as well. So as the market moves lower, right, this indicator in here, it's diverging. Um, you know, I'm getting less issues that are making 52 week lows with the market that's kind of selling off. So this is a pretty, I think, uh, you know, good indication that there might be a rally coming in here as well. I mean, you could see this new lows um, as the market was selling off, uh, you know, back in March one two three and then one two three and then you've had a pretty strong rally kind of following up and it's happening on the upside as well i mean you're you're making new 52 week highs uh the market kind of goes sideways or making new highs in here and the, this indicator kind of starts to show you i don't think so i think you know i think there's weakness underneath the market and then you're getting the big sell-off so this is new week highs versus new week lows new 52 week lows in the nasdaq so pay attention to that these are all things that i that i look at for um, you know, gauging the sentiment in the market and see where the positioning is. Um, so I have a little bit of an edge over the rest of the participants that are, you know, maybe sometimes just going in there and just, oh, I want to buy, I want to sell. But, you know, we want to have a process behind that and just kind of uh, think things from a larger perspective. So, so, um, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to, if something is going to happen and you're going to go wrong in here, at least you know that, hey, you, you, you've analyzed it as best as you could and, and, and it <laughs> fell flat on your face, which, which happens, right? So, um, the next one that I have, I'm going to go really quickly through these because I've, I've touched on them last time as well, but they're worth bringing it back, which is the, uh, 200, um, percentage of stocks above the 200 day moving average. So right now we're only at about 21, um, and, which means that 80 are below their 200 day moving average. And it's in kind of line with the lows that we've made. So there's no real divergence in here yet, which means that we're still pretty depressed on a longer term basis in here, uh, being so far below the 200 day moving average. This that's the NASDAQ, right? That's the 200 uh, uh, day moving average and, uh, you know, resistance, resistant, and here we are below it. So a little bit problematic on the 200. So, uh, you know, maybe we're not going to get a huge rally in a larger third wave <laughs> to the upside. It might take some time, maybe a few months, uh, but take a look at the 50. So percentage of stocks that are below the 50 day moving average, right? They are, uh, they sold off a little bit in here, but NASDAQ made a new low, but these guys are still holding pretty strongly. I mean, at, the, at these lows, you are at about 12, 13%, and you're, you're about 20%. So, um, I think this is showing you that more and more stocks, uh, even on a further NASDAQ sell-off, the stocks inside this index, they're slightly recovering, right? Uh, they're continuing to climb slightly or they're not selling off as aggressively. So uh, that breath um, into those stocks, it's improving. And uh, and maybe that's why we're seeing also on those new 52 week highs, uh, on new 52 week lows that they're that they're they're getting less and less. So very interesting. This 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 market has been beaten down. So pay attention to it. I'm not saying, hey, catch the low in here, but um, there might be start 
it might be time to kind of start fishing in this barrel a little bit and just um, even for some content trend rallies, right? Uh, but be careful, it's volatile um, and uh, make sure you, you follow your risk reward parameters and uh, and uh, and just, just be, be careful, okay? So uh, here is, I wanted to show you a sector, um, you know, that I've kind of started to look at and it's interesting because um, and this is the XLC, so this is the communication sector from, from uh, you know, all the sectors in the S&P 500. And it's one that's been, and why do I have two slides of this guy? Okay, well, anyway. I don't know why. Maybe I wanted to put a different slide in there, and I and I and I uh, messed it up. But anyway, so this is um, the 50-month moving average, right? Which is pretty much similar to where the 200-week moving average is. So you can see that historically, this guy um, has been offering really, really good support and major sell-offs in the market. So um, you know, I, I mean, we're kind of close to it, right? We haven't closed below it, but. Uh, even though the smooth out of here looks, let's say, pretty impulsive, this could be wave A, and you can still enjoy a wave B rally before something else happens. So pay attention to this one. Go ahead and dive inside this technology. This this communication sector is one of the worst sectors. Um, not even XLK hasn't sold off as much as this one because you got a bunch of stuff in here. You got some Netflix. You got Disney. You got I think Disney is in here. You got, you know, I think Facebook. So you know this there's a bunch of damage in here, and the last month in here is very very bearish. Uh, maybe almost like a capitulation bearish type of a candle. So we're going to look for some signs in here, maybe on a weekly time frames, daily time frame, see how this price section evolves out of here. Um, you know, you can be patient. There is no rush, but, you know, maybe on a weekly basis, you get an engulfing, you get some kind of a hammer, you get something that tells you, hey, you know, there might be, there might be some rally coming in here, especially, you know, from such low levels and you've coming up to some, some interesting support back in here. So pay attention to the sector. I think it's definitely interesting. And since we're talking sectors, I wanted to show you on the relative uh, graph. So this is the RRG graphs, relative rotation graphs that we're watching every day. And uh, what's going on in here? It is um, you're looking at the weekly time frames, and you're looking at all the sectors in the S&P 500, from energy, utilities, you know, staples, materials, healthcare, real estate, uh, industrials, financials, communication, consumer discretionary, and uh, and communication in here. So uh, this is tech. I'm sorry, XLK. So you can see in here and what's going on in here, the sectors that are in this green quadrant, right? They're sectors that are outperforming the S&P 500 on a relative basis. Um, and these are still doing it. If you're looking at energy, these are all defensive sectors. You're looking at utilities, right? Healthcare, uh, um, you know, real estate, staples and materials. They're, they're doing pretty well, uh, but they're starting to weaken a little bit, right? So especially energy sector has been losing a lot of momentum coming into the weakening quadrant close to it. XLU is still doing pretty well, right? XLV is kind of coiling back lower. Um, staples are looking still fairly decent, but there's not a lot of volatility in materials, staples, and industrials. You know, the big volatility looks like it's in utilities. The further they are from the center, the more volatile there are and the more beta there is there. So right now, you know, these are losing momentum. And look at the ones that are starting to pick up. They were lagging for a long time. XLY, XLK, and XLC. And XLC is the one that it's, you know, starting to show a little bit of an improvement on, on, on this, uh, um, you know, on this weekly quadrant. So it's something where I wanted to start to pay attention. You wanted to reduce a little bit exposure on the ones that have been leading so far and start to pick up. Um, you know, you almost rebalance out of some of these moves or the ones that are, are, are coming, you know, out of here. Now, you know, you can wait maybe a few weeks until they're actually pushing higher a little bit. And if you wanted to go with the trend, you might want to wait until they're actually coming back into the, uh, you know, let's say leading quadrant, if that's ever going to happen, <laughs> we'll see, right? Because you can kind of go back into the improving end and fall back apart. But it is, um, you know, it is a good indication of them coming up with some momentum in here. And, uh, you know, if you dive in this, so in the program, we take a look at the, uh, you know, at what's going on inside the XLY, all the stocks in there, all the stocks in the SLC. And then I'm looking at the rotations of those stocks and see what's what's good, what's bad. And then, you know, I kind of make suggestions kind of based on that. And we do kind of the same thing for crypto in there as well. Um, so anyway, this is something that, you know, that I'm definitely watching and, and you know, trading and, and trying to, to get good exposure to, to some of these. So just a little bit of a parenthesis in there. And then, you know, here is your, your seasonality in terms of QQQ. 
so these are this is the ETF for the Nasdaq and I've showed this you know last week or whenever what was the last time we talked about Nasdaq but month of April is over it was supposed to be one of the best months um, but still we have some bullish performance in here from May to about August um, and I think that uh, you know it could surprise to the upside in terms of performance moving forward but don't forget the big guy in the room is the Fed and and that's the guy that I talk about right here in April to remember um, you know newsletter that's free you can you know go ahead and kind of uh, go up here into the substack.com just uh, subscribe you'll come straight to your email it's free I'm gonna write this you know as often as I can maybe once a week twice a week I wrote this on Saturday and um, you know it kind of walks you to some charts um, you know through the uh, sentiment in there to kind of what I'm looking what I'm thinking and uh, you know you might get a kick out of it and I actually call uh, Jay Powell Vlad the Impaler you know that's the guy that the Dracula was I uh, was uh, um, kind of copied from and uh you know he's got the stakes he's got everything all the cards are in his hands and he's the he's the master of the market right now right if he's um you know gonna gonna be aggressive and raise interest rates it's probably gonna hurt a few things if he's gonna you know pause the pedal and um you know be a little dovish at this meeting the stocks will rally and and um you know he's gonna get some curveballs from the economic side so today we had some kind of weak economic numbers i think on the uh, um was it the PMI or ISM? It was the ISM, and that came a little bit, can be low. It was early signs of a possible recession, maybe in the future. Who knows? But um, you know, we are of a full uh, employment, as they call it, 3.6 on the unemployment rate, and that usually uh, starts to trigger, uh, you know, um, let's say more of an economic doom. Uh, and and you know maybe Jay Powell won't be able to get too aggressive, right, into raising interest rates, and that's the narrative that we're we're having right now. Um, you know, from the two camps, right? From the inflation camp, which is on one side, and then from the growth camp, which is on the other side. So what is the Fed going to do? Is he going to, are they going to fight inflation uh, and destroy growth? Um, or, you know, um, they're going to find a balance and they're they going to ease off, depending on the inflation data coming um, next week, uh, where we'll see what the CPI is and then, you know, if that's going to give a re enough of a reason to the Fed to to kind of ease off a little bit, because basically what they're looking for, and I was talking this morning with the members in the in the in the, in the morning update, um, I was talking about, hey, listen, they're going to raise 50 basis points, but the next meeting in June, you know, they're looking to raise 75 basis points. At least that's what the market anticipates. So if those expectations are coming down based on some better inflation data, then we're looking at the rally in the markets and in Bitcoin and in the risk assets. So it remains to be seen, but I think, uh, you know, uh, maybe they just flushed it out here in the uh, January, February, March, and April, four months of weakness in the markets. Maybe they're going to give us, you know, the next four months um, or a little bit of a relief rally in here. We'll see. Uh, I'm talking my book a little bit. I'm long the market and, uh, you know, I'm trying to sell calls against some of my positions and to kind of generate uh, generate income in there and just try to reduce basis in some of the stocks I own, stuff like that. But, you know, pretty active in there. It's been a pretty good market. So, you know, really there's no place to hide in here because everything has kind of been going down. But I've been buying some bonds on the 10 year, 30 year. I'm not, I haven't done a video about it. I don't know, I don't know how many of you are interested in this, but you know, bonds are, are, are another kind of amazing market where, where I think there's plenty of opportunities right now, you know, from the, from the short end of the curve to the long end of the curve. So from the two year all the way up to 30, um, you know, they've been beaten down and they offer some good interest rates, some good yield. Um, and. Uh, you know, that kind of all ties in into, into the macro perspective. Guys, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and like. Visit me in the pro room. Check out my sub stack. And um, as always, I appreciate you being here. Love you all. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.